NGAD's evolving vision, the F-47 and the future of aerial combat. The topic of the sixth generation fighter has been a subject of intense discussion, often giving the impression that we know every detail. Yet, the development of the next generation air dominance NGAD program is in constant flux, with data shifting so significantly that what was once considered fact is no longer true. Let's delve into the precise changes within the NGAD program and their profound implications for the future of warfare. A new chapter, the F-47 emerges March 2025, marked a watershed moment for anyone tracking the American Sixth Generation Fighter Initiative, NGAD. That month, President Donald Trump, Secretary of Defense Pete Hegseth, and U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin jointly declared Boeing the victor of the Engineering and Manufacturing Development EMD phase. This triumph signals Boeing's first U.S. Air Force fighter contract win since the P-26 P shooter, America's inaugural all-metal fighter, excluding the F-A-18 Super Hornet and F-15 Eagle contracts inherited from the 1997 McDonnell Douglas acquisition. Simultaneously, the new fighter, previously recognized as the Penetrating Counter-Air PCA platform, received its official designation, F-47. This moniker not only honors the legendary World War II-era Republic P-47 Thunderbolt fighter-bomber, but also references the year the U.S. Air Force was founded symbolically aligning with the administration of the 47th President of the States. The F-47 is set to supersede the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, which entered service two decades prior as the U.S. Air Force's premier air superiority fighter. Its advent is crucial, necessitated by novel threats emanating from China, including advanced stealth aircraft and hypersonic long-range missiles. Simply put, adversaries can now potentially engage your fighters before they even leave the ground and their sophisticated defensive missiles might deny you the necessary proximity to fulfill your primary mission, controlling the skies. After all, air superiority remains the ultimate objective. Dispersed power, the family of systems concept. Initially, the NGAD fighter was conceived as a singular, all-encompassing replacement for the F-22, a kind of aerial wonder weapon. However, following a program review, High Command concluded that critical functions previously resident on every fighter could now be distributed across multiple platforms. For instance, if the primary goal is merely to integrate a human into a visual loop to command a swarm of collaborative combat aircraft, CCA drones, and orchestrate tactical maneuvers on the battlefield, the fighter itself doesn't necessarily require an onboard radar or other integral sensors. Instead, Capabilities such as radar, infrared search and track, IRST systems, electronic support measures, ESM, and electronic warfare functions can be distributed among modular CCA drones and other proximate air assets. One such integral component of the future NGAD family of systems, beyond the aforementioned CCAs, will be the newest Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider Bomber. According to various reports from U.S. Air Force officials, the refined NGAD concept will even delegate certain functions to space-based platforms or constellations comprising hundreds of satellites linked to the aircraft in real time. The CCA program itself anticipates an initial procurement of 100 to 150 units, priced between $20.5 million and $27.5 million per tail with plans to subsequently amass a formidable fleet of 1,000 or more of these drones. While some might contend that this novel approach, with its strong emphasis on tandem operations with CCAs, pushes the distributed sensor concept to its extreme and potentially restricts the F-47's utility when CCAs are unavailable, the pros far outweigh the cons. These drones will almost invariably operate much closer to hazardous target zones than a manned fighter transmitting data among themselves. This enables cooperative sensing tactics and a higher degree of target triangulation, often yielding superior accuracy 
and more robust sensor data. Streamlined payload and extended reach. Leaner, farther. A probable evolution in the NGAD program involves a reduction in the fighter's internal payload capacity. NGAD had almost universally been depicted as a heavy interceptor with substantial range, optimized for combat in the Pacific theater. In such scenarios, Allied tanker aircraft would be compelled to operate beyond the range of most fighters to reach their target areas, especially in the early phases of a conflict. The initial vision mandated the new fighter carry a significant arsenal of diverse weapons in its internal bays to preserve its stealth attributes, crucial for survival and for delivering vital strikes deep within contested airspace. However, what if the lion's share of NGAD's offensive capability were concentrated on its accompanying drones rather than crammed into the fighter jet itself? This would allow for a substantial reduction in the F-47's dimensions and could exponentially increase survivability, as the pilot wouldn't need to approach enemy defense systems at such dangerous proximity. This could prove to be a literal game-changer against rapidly advancing enemy air defense capabilities, particularly the fusion of information from multiple sensors to detect even the stealthiest aircraft at long range. By reducing the F-47's payload requirements and integrating even more CCAs, exceptional tactical flexibility can be achieved. Consider this, particularly large munitions, like long-range air-to-air missiles, could be carried by B-21 Raiders operating deeper within contested zones, while the agile F-15 EX Eagle II fighters and B-52 Stratofortress bombers perform similar roles along the outer perimeter of high-threat areas. Meanwhile, the NGAD fighter, positioned far ahead, could command the launch of missiles from these standoff aircraft. This doesn't imply the fighter will be disarmed entirely. At least four AM-120, Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missiles, or AM-260, Joint Advanced Tactical Missiles, JATM, along with several AM-9X Sidewinders or four small diameter bombs, will undoubtedly find a discrete place within its compartments. Conversely, the recent assertion by U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin that the F-47 will boast a combat radius exceeding a thousand nautical miles introduces a significant question mark to the concept of downsizing the sixth-generation fighter. Nevertheless, a nearly double range compared to the carrier-based F-35C's 615 nautical miles would represent a clear endurance advantage for the NGAD fighter, particularly for missions in the Western Pacific, far from aircraft carriers. Unlike in Europe and the Middle East, Allied and U.S. air bases are not situated in close proximity to the battle space, necessitating vast distances to be covered. Yet, we must again include a caveat here. The U.S. Air Force has repeatedly emphasized the importance of fielding a fleet of next-generation air-to-air tankers, known as the Next Generation Air Refueling System, NGAS, by 2040. Intriguingly, Boeing itself has been developing the low-visibility MQ-25 Stingray refueling drones for several years, suggesting their compatibility with F-47 fighters can be considered virtually assured. So. What does this ultimately mean? The decision regarding the 1,000 nautical mile operational range and the overall size of NGAD will undoubtedly evolve if the U.S. Air Force successfully acquires a sufficient number of stealth tankers by the time the sixth generation of fighters becomes operational. Unyielding stealth and manned presence. What the F-47, like its costly predecessor, the F-22, will definitively not relinquish is a high degree of broadband, low observability, enabling it to operate effectively deep within highly advanced integrated air defense networks. This is corroborated by dozens of presented concept art pieces for the tailless NGAD aircraft, including those from Boeing itself. Of course, the age-old practice of propaganda aimed at misleading adversaries with an inaccurate visualization of a future fighter has not been abandoned. For instance, canards, small horizontal wings, positioned near the nose of the fighter, are unlikely to appear on a live craft. By mid-April of this year, 
Air Force representatives themselves informed Air and Space Forces magazine that previously presented images should be viewed with a significant degree of skepticism. Another undeniable aspect of the F-47 is the continued presence of a pilot in the cockpit. While figures like Elon Musk tirelessly proclaim that small drones are poised to replace conventional aircraft, aviation insiders and experts largely hold the opposite view. For example, Bill Sweetman, Aviation Week Group editor, stated, Whatever one's view of the F-22, it can't be replaced by a quadcopter. The decision for manned capability will likely make NGAD slightly less popular among enthusiasts than at the program's inception, when discussions included an unmanned version of the sixth-generation fighter. However, even something as seemingly trivial as a communication failure for an AI pilot at the controls points to the unenviable fate of a fighter without human oversight. Reflecting on this, Justin Bronk, a senior research fellow for air power and technology at the UK-based defense think tank Royal United Services Institute, asserted, Human pilots can be trusted, but few want to see autonomous fighters making life-or-death decisions. He conceded that crewed fighters have clear disadvantages, cost, training, and the need to rescue downed crews, but argued that relying on AI at this juncture would be an unjustifiably bold step. Discussions and references concerning the F-47's engine suggest an aircraft of impressive size with an equally impressive range, somewhat reminiscent of the aging F-111 Aardvark variable geometry bombers that formed the Air Force's backbone from the 1960s to the 1990s. The focus is on next-generation adaptive cycle turbofan engines, a fiercely contested area between competing designs from Pratt and Whitney and General Electric, suggesting we might witness these in action as early as the 2030s. Now, it's your turn to tell us what crucial changes in the NGAD program we might have overlooked. Share your insights in the comments below. And if you found this video engaging, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and activating the notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.